Guys, I'm going to talk to you all today about Sonic's love life. Now, folks. Now, folks, I want you to understand. I want you. To, I want you to understand this simple fact. I didn't mind Sonic having Rome. I don't mind Sonic having, you know, romances. Some people did. Some people just called this comic a furry soap opera because, well, it, it's ha it has a bunch of anthropomorphic characters, so obviously it's a furry soap opera because, you know, characters getting together and stuff. When really, I think Sonic having relationships in the Archie comics opened another dimension of Sonic's character. Rather than you all trying to, rather than some people trying to see that, they quickly dismiss it, or they call Sonic too much of a playboy. Okay, have you all ever been dumped before? Like I'm talking hard. Sonic was that way because him and Sally weren't really together anymore. After the slap. You know, Sonic was just... Sonic did what any other human would do. Even though he's not human. But he did what any of us would do in that situation. If, we're the, if the breakup was particularly hard. They, you know, he basically went through a whole bunch of flings. To Fiona, almost Mina... To Bunny, and then back to, I wouldn't say Amy, but back to Sally, but, you know, there ain't nothing wrong with that. Sonic just went through the motions. You know, that's not, there ain't nothing wrong with that, because any, uh, because any other actual person would do the same thing. And I know, it's a cartoon hedgehog, Bugsy. It's... Like, it shouldn't have real-life elements, but I feel like it makes Sonic a little bit more real. It makes Sonic like an actual character. Honestly, this is why I like Sonic most of Because he's actually more actual character in movies. To actually do something like that. It makes him Because what the fuck? I mean, guys, you're not a woman. I mean, come on, man. Don't deny it. Some of you have had 20 women before you found the right one. Am I talking? Am I right, man? And we all know Bugsy's streak of don't you say it on this video on Sakamara, so help, so help me, you know who. Even I'm not gonna lie, I've had me a couple of guys before I wound up with Buzzy. Eh, you're never gonna. So this does make him relatable. You're never gonna beat Buzzy's old record. Shut up, Buzz! I'm gonna cut your wings off. I love you, Buzzy. Yes, unfortunately, a woman can never compare to a guy, and how many women he gets before finding the right woman? Now, can she? Am I right, ladies? Men. That's like around to catch your wings up. You have to catch me, fat. Actually, I don't want to. I don't want to run. Also, in your don't make me shoot him. I'm like around. I'll shoot him. I'm like around, Bugsy. I don't want to run in your house because it smells like because Aaron and Monica have been fucking, and I just don't want to run. I know it's. I know it doesn't smell like regular sex in there, doesn't it? I know, right? It's just fucking <laughs> man. It smells like robots and fish parts. Oh god, look fuck. I know. Don't. It doesn't even smell normal. Ah, man. Let's just not talk about it. Let Bugs to get back to the video, dude. I have like five Glade plugins in this house right now, in one outlet. And I'm ready to kill your friend, uh, your brother, Bugsy. Bugsy, how many freaking girls? If he brings up how many girls you have been with and how many are on my hit list. Eh. 
wait, trust me, I'm done with that. I was done with the joke. It was the, it means, I was referencing Bugsy stuff, but I was just doing it as a joke. But I can't really, you know what? I don't feel like doing it after smelling, after smelling Aridin and Monica's high tide. Uh, is that what we call it? Yeah, we call it. We're calling it high tide. Fuck. Anyway, Spugs, I'm gonna just sit on your bed. You mind? Ah, go right ahead. Let me make myself comfortable. I'm gonna do the issues again. Let me go make myself comfortable, folks. Yeah. But seriously, go ahead and do, go ahead and do your thing. I'm gonna just sit here and not smell high tide. Uh, here you go. What is this? It's a tampon for your nose. Why? Because you can smell that, so you don't smell that. Ew. Okay. But back to the video, guys. Sorry for this non sequitur we're doing. Alright, Bugsy, back to it. I just think Sonic as... Sonic as a character, it makes him a lot more realistic. You know how interesting it would have been to see Sonic visually scared in Forces? You know how interesting it all would have been to see Sonic go through some sort of arc in Forces? Like, if he was just like Archie Sonic, think of how it would have been. And don't give me that shit that he's too powerful, because yeah, he is. But let's say Infinite was even more powerful than Archie Sonic in Forces, if, like, Archie Sonic was in it. That would destroy Sonic's ego. That would really break him down. And he hasn't been, and Archie Sonic hasn't been breaking, hasn't been broke, hasn't been really broke down since the Robotnik Victorious arc. That was at Sonic's lowest point because Sonic was getting his ass handed to him. Or may I remind you from my Dark Plots video, my second Dark Plots video. That was Sonic's lowest point. And if only, if only forces could have captured that, or even had a moment where where Robotnik is destroying everything and Sonic is trying to frantically save everybody, just like in the comic, that would have been so good. I mean, it'd be better than Infinite. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm being real with you guys. I really didn't like Infinite, but yeah, I think Sonic should show a lot more emotion. That was my main problem with Forces. Sonic didn't show any kind of an any kind of emotion in the English in the English though in the English version of it. Like Sonic even says in the Japanese version, even if I'm scared, I'm still gonna keep running. In the Japanese version, he acknowledges that he's scared. That's because Americans want to make him a damn Gary Stu of all things. I kind of, I kind of blame, I kind of blame, I kind of either blame the the Japanese side team, but I kind of blame Pontac and Graf for kind of probably translating the story that way. But I really feel like Sonic showing emotion and showing that he was scared and really uncertain with what's going on with them would be really, really good. And then he sees, and then he sees your character save him. Well, you saving. Well, he still saves you. But he's like, because uh, it feels, it actually kind of feels good to do what I do. do, what I do. You know, kind of showing that he kind of is a little depressed too. Would have been, would have been so much. I'm not saying, we ain't talking Sayori depressed. We are just talking him being depressed. But we the thing is, none of this stuff has to be done up for comedic effect. And you know what? Let's make Tails useful for crying out loud. Again, I can make all the jokes of Tails showing Chaos's ass and Chaos grabbing it. Grabbing it. Going to grab it, but... Come on, man. Tails needed to do better. I'm tired of this whiny bitch persona he has now. Tails fucking fought Chaos, Chaos 3 
and didn't fucking trip out and say, Sonic, help me! Because he wanted to be a hero in his own right. But no, y'all want to make him into the techie. The smart alecky techie. But then buckle up. Again, like Sonic, they want to make him into a cliche character, which would follow the Gary Stu trope. You know, I love the like anything. Else. You know, unlike the you know, unlike the massive people who harp about the adventure games and how much they want it back. You know what? I want I want Sonic and Tails' old personalities back. Sonic was cocky, but there are times where he was even kind of unsure of himself a little bit. And even though it's, even though Tails was in dangerous situations and fought Eggman all by himself, he was never truly scared because he, a lot of Sonic rubbed off on him. Yeah, in fact, if I could say so about Tails... Personally, what happened in Sonic Forces, if you want to make Tails look like he had been delving into a bit of insanity, don't make him look like that. Really touch on insanity, like research insanity, for example. See what people do whenever they have their heroes die and all that stuff. And I'm not saying... And I'm not saying make the man Yuri insane. Yeah, I'm making Doki Doki references. Don't. Like, don't make him go crazy to a point of killing others insane like the Joker. You're talking about someone who was really idolizing him. If you want to go insane with Tails, given how his personality was, I wouldn't go the route of making him a coward. I would go the route of making him Try and do what Sonic does and take on his personality to the point of putting himself in danger. Eh. That's insanity. Breaking yourself to the point that you try to be your hero and keep putting yourself in danger. Nah, to the got, point where you start thinking he's still around in some cases. I got, a, I got a better I got a better one. Like we really see the tails lost it. He talk like he's talking to like he's in his workshop, humming Sonic's theme. It's like off. Every everything in his workshop is like dark, and all you hear is like an eerie do 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 do. He's like crying and he's laughing. It's like it's just he's like losing it. So, and let's say, since it's been six months, and he sees, and, you know, the same thing happens with Chaos, and he goes like, do it! Do it! Kill me! You already, you all took Sonic from me! You might as well just do, do this to me too! And, you know, and then classic Sonic comes up and saves his ass. Again! Something that would work. And then, Sonic, help me! Like, like, Tails really wanting to die because he thinks Sonic is dead. And I know, for some of you, that's too deep. That's too fanfic -y. But it would make so much fucking sense. I know how you guys are like, oh, anything serious in a Sonic game is too fanfic -y. But it makes sense. For the rest of you that act like fucking idiots whenever something real happens in a Sonic game, it makes too much goddamn sense. Sorry. So, sorry, guys. But honestly, I get Like, there are those times where people just say, oh, that's too fanfic -y. What? Sonic can't have a serious story with competent people actually making it? Like, if we had Ian Flynn do it? Or, dare I say me? Ian Flynn did help with the making of this then. Oh, yeah. wait, you said it was a comic. My bad. Only the time comics. I would have, you know, and Tails just kind of losing his sanity for those six months that Sonic was away. That would have been more powerful. And we would have get, you know, and this is kind of like what I do to fix Sonic Forces now than Sonic's relationships. But, 
and you know, and if we're gonna make Tales, if we're gonna make classic Sonic and Tales is little fair well more impactful. Let's have Sonic talk. Let's have classic Sonic talk. Let's get Jaleel White. He ain't doing anything. He would love to do it. He doesn't mind voicing Sonic. And this is like if I had control of Sega, because <laughs> if I had control of Sega, oh, that's another video entirely. <laughs> oh, that's another video entirely, gentlemen. But uh, we'll get to that. We'll get to that tomorrow. But here's the thing. You know, the points of Eggman actually taking over the city works. Him, him destroying it with robots works. The only thing I would change is Eggman having a Jumbotron basically saying how they're all fucked. He doesn't say that they're all fucked. But, you know, the way, you know... What he implies that you all have to, you all have to either submit to the Eggman Empire or be destroyed. Because Eggman would be vain like that. Eggman would literally gloat like that. He finally has won over on Sonic. He has finally won. He will gloat. He's that kind of person. Because he knows. He knows. No one would stand up against no one would stand up against him without Sonic. That's the kind of mindset he'd be working with. But now that Sonic's got his like confidence back because the custom hero is helping him out. Let's say we get to an Eggman that's like more desperate. He really wants to win this time. He finally got to win this time. He finally proved to himself that he finally won. And then Sonic comes back and he's desperate. He's he's not like the same Eggman we know. He's really desperate. He tries to, he tries to like, and that's where he starts to think about his plan. To, that's when he starts to think about his plan. To destroy, to destroy the Earth, because, because, ladies and gentlemen, Eggman figures if he can destroy the world, he can make the Phantom movie, make it, you know, do his world in its own image without Sonic, without the other animals, without the Mobians, just him, the humans, everything else. And maybe we can't. That maybe all along, this is what Eggman always wanted. To live in a world without Sonic. To live in a world without any pesky animals getting in his way. And you know why that would work? Because it reveals a little bit of it reveals a little bit of Eggman and how he's and what he's willing to do to hold on to to the power. And don't get me wrong, I love Sonic Forces as a game as a game, and the story between the custom characters is the only thing I wouldn't change. But I would let the custom character actually be the one to help Sonic and not the other way around. Because the custom hero is the one thing that's pick is going to pick up the slack after you know since Sonic's been gone. So he's been doing this hero thing for a good six months. He may be inexperienced, but he knows what he's doing. And yeah. And if I really wanted to be a little bit errant, if I wanted to be fanfic like a lot of you say, I'd actually make Dark Sonic canon. You want to know how? I'd make it so Tails almost, well, Tails doesn't die, but he almost, like, he almost, it's like a, like, my fingers are, like, really close. This is, like, almost to the point where he almost could have died, right? 
you know, Sonic doesn't know that, you know, Tails is still alive, but he thinks he's dead. And Sonic, Sonic has all the Chaos Emeralds with him. Because, yeah, the Chaos Emeralds would have a thing. He turns into Dark Sonic, and it is the most creepy, unsettling thing you will ever see. Like, the real creepiness of what Sonic.exe could be was the kind of just just raw just raw dark emotions from Sonic like in Sonic X mixed with a little bit of Fleetway Sonic. Sonic becomes crazed and then the level starts with you kind of being you know kind of attacking everything. And your character is the one that snaps him out of it. And shows him that Tails is still alive. Sonic stops, and they stop Eggman. Infinite, Infinite would just be a creation of Robo. Infinite would still be a creation. Uh, Infinite would just be a creation of Eggman. None of this. I, you know, Shadow beats him. He goes, "I'm not weak. I'm not weak." No, he is a straight up creation of Robotnik. So that's when Shadow, when Shadow does call him weak. It sticks because he's supposed to be the next ultimate life form. That would make more sense. Bam! And if anybody says that these changes are way too fanficy, they wanted a dark story. This is how we. Do, this is how I do it. Any of you have any other ideas? Boom. But the thing about Sonic is in the Archie comics. And this is back to my actual point. He got to be a lot more. He got to be a lot more like a character rather than a rather than a cool '90s '90s dude. You know, and even like in Adventure, he had more heart. It's like Colors and Lost World took that away from him. And I blame the writers on that one. I don't blame the gameplay. Because to me, the gameplay in Sonic Lost World, the gameplay in Sonic, the gameplay in Sonic Forces is what I expected it to be, and I didn't hate it. I loved it. I didn't care because I had fun. I know you're. I know you have a difference of opinion, and I'm not gonna hate you for that. But I, I know some of you are hypocritical because. You say that Sonic, you say that Sonic Forces levels were short. Sonic Colors levels were short. And a little bit of, and, you know, and not generations though, but Colors were short. And you know what? You know what? That's the thing. If you guys want to be like, oh, these are short, but Colors were still, he all love Colors. Y'all love colors, right? Y'all worship the ground colors is colors is freaking feet walk upon, right? Boom. Personally, I, that's why I enjoyed it because the gameplay to me may not have been that solid, but in most parts, if you know what you're doing, it can be the most it can be the most smoothest experience you can have. Why do you think you see a lot of the speed running the game? Or speed running levels? Or speed running challenges? Because when you really got that, when you got all of the stuff in the level memorized, you can breeze past it with no problems. And no weird boost problems either. Now, if you want to, if you want to dispute that with me in the comments, cool. But I suggest you watch the whole video. And I'm actually going to tell this how, I, how I'd fix Sonic and Sonic Forces. Remember, Archie Sonic had a lot more going for him because he wasn't restricted by Sega's rules. And I like, Ar and I like the fact that they're bringing Archie Sonic back because they can go about, they can go about Sonic in a whole different way. And they're going to do an issue later on in the future 
that deals with Sonic dealing with Sonic getting roboticized and Antoine being in a coma. So, we're going to see how this all affects Sonic. Something that Forces failed to do. It's like Sega's afraid to have Sonic show anything else. And we know Roger, Roger Craig Smith can do it. The man has based, the man has done Enzio. A whole bunch of other characters. He knows how to show emotion. Sega. Sega of, Amer Sega of Japan. Sega of America. Give that to the man. Writers, give, give Roger Craig Smith something to do other than him being, ooh, happy, cool Sonic. And don't you all give me that excuse that Sonic is for kids. He is for everybody. Like Mario is. And if anybody says that, if anybody says that whole spiel, everybody still plays Sonic. Grown ass men, grown ass men play Sonic, and don't say they have something wrong with them either, because not a lot of people, not a lot of people act like Christian when they play Sonic. Just deal with these, listen to what I gotta say, and don't try and don't try to dispute Sonic being. Sonic, Sonic not being for everybody. Okay? Okay. Glad we had this talk, everybody. I'll see you later. And, um, before I go, since I didn't do a legit review on the, on the, uh, since I didn't do a legit review, on the on the issue in question next issue we're going to have some fun when that when it comes out i don't know if i'm going to get no, i'm going to try and see if like the if these guys can like notify me or just you know give me like some sort of like hey the next issue's up the next issue's up Bugsy. let's get to it now, if you excuse me, me and Sakamaru have to clean up the, have to clean up our, have to clean up my place because I'm tired of it smelling like robot parts and fish ass. Okay, okay. I'm tired of Monica. I'm tired of Monica and Eric, Eric and screwing like they're fucking teenagers. Done. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Gonna, me and Hans Sakamara are gonna go get some freaking air freshener. Is Walmart even open tonight? We're gonna we're gonna fucking find out. If not, we're going to other well, we're going to other universes and going to grab a whole bunch of air fresheners. Eh, okay, sounds good. Hey, can we get can we get some can we get some of that? Can we get some of my favorite root beer while we're there? I want to. Which one? You know which one. Really? Yeah, I haven't had. I haven't had bark in a while. So I kind of want some. Oh, dude! Why didn't you just go get it yourself, though? I just wasn't thinking about it. the review, honey. We're done with it. Yeah, this is. Have you ever seen a Bugsy video? This is like the moment where me and Bugsy just talk about stuff, and then after that, you know, after that little bit of banter, the video's done. So anyway, so anyways, I'm talking about it really. Hey, your girlfriend doesn't know how we work. Kind of a thing. Eh, okay. The next time, man, don't do that again. Alright, I'll tell Stocking. Or I'll tell Stocking about. Or I'll tell Stocking about 
Coke was a little sock you used to still keep with you. You, you son, you son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, okay. But seriously, are we gonna get some of that bark, that bark root beer, man? I mean, like, you know, I got a sweet tooth because my wife has a sweet tooth, and she has me jonesing for like all these different candies that we don't even have. So I'm jonesing for some root beer, like. Seriously. All right, all right. Let's let's go on some more. But we gotta go get some supplies and stuff because I am so tired of Aaron. And, I'm so tired of Aaron and Monica getting all around this house, man. I am tired of it. Seriously. They hate teenagers. Well, I mean, Monica could be whatever age she thinks she is, but. Yeah, but Aridin is like our age, so yeah. Kinda of, kind of a kind of a fucked up deal. Alright, see you guys later. We got air freshener and whoop beer. Hi. Keep it chaotic, folks. <clears throat>